Just Google it. 25 years ago, that sentence would have made absolutely no sense. Today, the word Google is not only a verb, but one of the most powerful tech companies in the world. Before Google. You know how it goes. You're watching Netflix, and you're sure you recognize that actor from something else, but you just can't put your finger on it. Thank goodness for Google. Or when you're out at a fancy restaurant and want to know what osobuco is so you can play it cool before the waiter asks for your order. Quick, Google search. Or you're having a heated argument with your friends, and you know you're right. You swipe open your phone and Google just how many Stanley Cups Wayne Gretzky has won. Aha, you knew it, it's four. You were so right, in your face. But what was it like before Google? Yes, there were, and are, other search engines. But nobody today is yahooing or binging. We're all Googling. Before the internet age, if you wanted to find something out, your options were the encyclopedia, a book, or calling someone you knew who was really smart. Doing a research paper or project for school involved going to the library and checking out a pile of books on the subject. And when the internet did come online, existing search engines were not the most user-friendly. Then Google came along and changed everything. Google in the 1990s In 1996, Larry Page and Sergey Brin were PhD students at Stanford studying the complex mathematics of the World Wide Web. Their thesis project was about linking different websites together, which would allow users to search the internet. Page and Brin's original project was named Backrub. Luckily, the name didn't stick. Can you imagine backrubbing all of your questions? Yeah, neither can we. The pair registered the domain google.com on September 15, 1997. Believe it or not, the name was actually a typo. Page originally planned to name the company Google, O-L instead of L-E, which is a mathematical term for the number one followed by 100 zeros. No worries though, the name Google still represents the website's plethora of possibilities. Google was formally incorporated on September 4th, 1998 in Susan Wojcicki's garage, of all places, in Menlo Park, California. You may know the name because today Wojcicki is the CEO at YouTube, but she began her tech career doing marketing research for Google. Google went viral instantly. By the end of 1998, Google already had an index of an incredible 60 million web pages. The company's name was buzzing around Silicon Valley. The tech world was thrilled with this new innovation, and Google received an inconceivable amount of money from early investors. At the time, Google experienced some competition from sites like Hotbot and Excite.com, but none of them were as sophisticated as Google. And by 1999, Google had outgrown its garage, so the company packed up and moved to Palo Alto. Googleplex, the Google HQ and Complex, was founded, and the company has been at the same address ever since. Please take a second to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel so you never miss a new video. Google, 2000 to 2005. Google exploded into the new millennium and basically created the internet age in which we find ourselves today. In 2000, Google sold ads associated with keywords. Say you were surfing the web and you stumbled upon someone's Green Day blog. All of a sudden, you'd be getting ads for Green Day concert tickets in your area. This was the beginning of targeted advertising, something that almost every app and website relies on today. The people at Google were the early innovators of this advertising method, and it's still their main source of revenue. In the early 2000s, the verb to Google quickly became a part of everyday language. They towered over other search engine sites such as Yahoo and Bing. Their status was further cemented when they unveiled Gmail in 2004. Email was pretty popular, but not widely available to the average person. If you had an email account, it was most likely assigned to you by your workplace or school. Eventually, you could get a personal email address, which was associated with your internet provider and could be accessed only on specific computers. But Gmail was revolutionary because it linked email to the internet. You could be on vacation in Japan, and if you found an internet cafe, you could write an email home to your loved ones. 
In the early days of email, you were constantly deleting messages as the files took up too much room for your computer to handle. Gmail offered a whopping one gigabyte of storage to users for free. That doesn't sound like much now, but this absolutely blew people's minds. Gmail threaded conversations together so that replies no longer appeared as new messages, which really cut down on digital clutter. With its spam filtering and minimal design, it's hard to comprehend just how revolutionary Gmail was at the time. Now, people will give you weird looks if you don't have a Gmail account. Google from 2005 to 2009 in 2005, Google unveiled Maps, a complete satellite view of the world that anyone, anywhere could access with their computer. And where would we be without it today? Literally! By 2007, Google amped up their GPS capabilities and introduced Street View, which allowed you to get a full picture of every street in the world. Well, at first it was only San Francisco, but it wasn't long before Google strapped heavy-duty cameras onto the tops of cars and drove around the world world, capturing images of every street. There were some concerns about privacy, though. Try Googling your address. Maybe there's an image of you gardening outside for the whole world to see. Online GPS technology pretty much made paper maps obsolete. But before 2011, you'd still have to print off your directions before leaving the house. This was still before smartphones came on the market. Today, you can plan your route and view traffic conditions all on your phone. Not while driving, of course. Keep your eyes on the road. By 2005, Google was valued at a staggering $52 billion and rivaled other tech powerhouses like Microsoft. The battles raged between Bing and Google, Gmail and Hotmail, Chrome and Internet Explorer. And with YouTube on the rise in 2006, Google had their competition cut out for them. But if you can't beat them, join them. Or at least buy them for an extraordinary amount of money. Instead of creating a video player of their own, in 2006, Google opted to buy YouTube and has owned the video platform ever since. This was also a huge year for communication. Google Translate popped up in 2006 and has been helping friends across the world transcend language barriers. And it's been a lifesaver for struggling students desperate to complete their Spanish homework. Google rounded out the decade by introducing Chrome, a web browser that challenged Apple's Safari and Microsoft's Internet Explorer. A lot of people prefer Chrome because it's user-friendly and compatible with more websites. But because it's a separate extension, most people stick with the browser that came with their computer. As the decade came to a close, Google recognized that to stay relevant, innovation was necessary. What could possibly be next? The 2010s and Google while Google had been mainly a software company focused on internet development, they realized their next step had to be in the physical world. In 2010, they released Nexus One, the first Google cell phone. It was compact and had a pretty good camera. But at the time, everyone was enchanted with the Apple iPhone, so Google didn't stand a chance. Not yet, at least. In 2012, Google bought Motorola, which was a massive step in helping them expand into the consumer electronics market. By 2016, they revealed the Google Pixel, which actually sold pretty well. It was said to have a better camera and clearer display than the iPhones of the day. Plus, Google boasted unlimited photo storage, which was way better than Apple's offering. In 2012, Google Drive was unveiled. It was Google's attempt at a work suite meant to rival Microsoft Office. From sheets, docs, and slides, the drive allows multiple people to work on and access documents simultaneously. And because all files are stored on Google's servers, the work experience is seamless. Now, with iCloud and OneDrive, this seems pretty standard. But in 2012, it was pretty amazing to be sitting on the other side of the office from your colleague and working on the same presentation. Google seems to have a finger on the pulse, and they're pretty good at anticipating people's technological needs. There have been a few times, however, when they've truly missed the mark. Like in 2013 with the Google Glass. 
Google genuinely believed that people would wear a goofy-looking headset with a see-through lens that could display everything from text messages to maps and reminders. Little did they know that the future of wearable tech was on people's wrists, with the Apple Watch and Fitbit striking gold. Another Google pitfall has been their attempts at social media. They've tried multiple times with Google+, Google Buzz, and Google Friend Connect with all of them ultimately failing. It's hard to know what special ingredient Google is missing here. Maybe they didn't get in on the social media game early enough. And let's face it, if you have to convince people that your platform is cool and hip, chances are your idea is already dead in the water. One successful investment that Google made in 2014 was buying Nest, a smart home tech company. Google had ideas about integrating everything in your home into one centralized computer system, from your thermostat to security cameras. And in 2016, Google Home was released. It's a voice-activated assistant that centrally controls home devices. OK, Google, are you always listening? A lot of people like the ease of this technology, but others find it a bit creepy. 2015 became a landmark year for Google. The company faced a massive restructuring with the creation of Alphabet Inc., Google's holding company. The establishment of Alphabet Inc. was to help make the core Google business more accountable. It was a strategic move that allowed greater autonomy to expand into businesses other than internet services. In December of 2019, founders Larry Page and Sergey Brin announced their resignation from their executive posts. This marked the end of an era and begged the question, what's next for Google? Google Today and Beyond under new CEO Sundar Pichai, the big thing at Google right now is their work on driverless cars. Waymo is under the Alphabet Inc. umbrella and offers a fully functioning self-driving taxi service in Phoenix. No more boring small talk on the way to the airport. It might be a long time before this initiative gains public trust, however. There are a lot of concerns about safety for both pedestrians and passengers. Google also continues to innovate in consumer tech. Every year, their phones and computers are more sophisticated. But is this really enough to compete with Apple? The main problem Google will run up against is brand loyalty. At this point, people are pretty stuck in their technological ways. It's hard to convince people to start using a completely new product. Project Loon is another big idea Google is working on. The goal of this endeavor is to expand the internet connectivity by using stratospheric balloons. The balloons carry internet service to rural and remote communities that don't otherwise have reliable internet access. And if Google knows anything, it's the value of a good internet connection. Another recent Alphabet Inc. acquisition was Boston Dynamics. The engineers at this company continue to impress with their creation of fully autonomous robots that are quite physically agile. Some of them can even do backflips. Under Google's wing, there's no telling how far this technology can go. At this point, Google literally has more money than they know what to do with. The company is entering an exciting phase of exploration and curiosity, and they're definitely feeling lucky. Odds and Ends Attention all Buffy fans! In 2002, the character of Willow on Buffy the Vampire Slayer was the first fictional character to use Google as a verb on TV. And did you know that Gmail launched on April 1st in 2004? I guess if Gmail ended up being a bust, Google could have just said it was an April Fool's Day joke. Just because they are a high-tech company, Google sometimes does things the old-fashioned way. At Google headquarters, they often rent a herd of 200 goats for about a week to cut the grass and keep the weeds at bay. Hey Google, how much grass can a goat eat in a day? Thanks so much for watching. Go ahead and check out another great video. Oh, and remember to like and subscribe.